On this episode of DC on Screen, I am hanging out with Jason in his nefarious villain lair. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we're just going to have a fun... A dungeon of sorts? We're just going to have a fun little impromptu DC on Screen episode. And uh, I don't think we've ever done it this way before, precisely. Dave's uh, winging it. I'm winging it a little bit. I, I've got some screenshots that I took in the last like 10 minutes. And we're just going to go through a couple of stories and talk about what Jason thought of Aquaman. Hell yeah. In the Lost Kingdom. And uh, I hope you join us. Mm-hmm. We'll be right back. So for the half of you that are still there after you learned that we're winging it. Yeah. <laughs> welcome back <laughs> uh, welcome into dc on screen indeed the podcast that's been bringing you news and reviews of the dc properties on film and television since 2015 god we've been doing this a long time mm-hmm. we're gonna have like our 10 year anniversary around the time we get the reboot uh-huh that'll be fun yeah yeah, we'll have uh, yeah Batman two and Superman Legacy. It'll be fully refreshing. Yeah, yeah. I'm David C. Robertson, as you guys know, most of you. Uh, this is my uh, cohort here, Jason Goss. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah. Close enough to shake his hand. I know that's audio. It's uh, warm and hands. slightly wet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, so, called, it's called clammy. Yeah. Um, show nerves, as they call them. Yeah. I didn't look up numbers, but I'm 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 reading that Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom is uh well, it's got some legs. It's doing all right. It's doing better than anybody really reasonably thought it would. Uh or at least anyone in the fandom that I see. Uh what you, more than I thought. Yeah, you finally saw it though. Yeah. Yeah. You finally saw you saw it this morning, right? Uh no, no. Yesterday oh. or I'm about twenty two hours out. Of having seen it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Was I correct in my belief that you would want your own topo? I do. Very much. <laughs> I mean, not stuffed animal version. Like, uh-huh. who the fuck can use a topo? Right. It's a little recon cephalopod that yeah. can turn invisible. Look, I... And I, has a little bit of fight in him, but also knows when to retreat. Can he turn invisible? Or was he just, like, invisible when he touched Aquaman when he was invisible? No, no. Just all cephalopods can kind of... Oh, gotcha. Kind of do that environment blending thing. They yeah. camouflage very well. They camouflage very well. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. He can't so do the actual, like an actual invisible thing. Yeah, that's right. not like a real cloaking device or nah, anything. Nah. Yeah. You just don't know where the fuck they are uh, <laughs> until they snatch your ass. <laughs> snatch your ass. Mm-hmm. Okay, so did you also think it was dumb that he was genetically engineered? No, no, not really. Really? I don't know. It, it, it made as little or as much sense as it could have or should have. I, I It was irrelevant to me. It just, you know, it felt weird because... You know, that's Aquaman's whole thing is that he talks to the fish and Mm -hmm. sea creatures and says, hey, man, go do this. And then they go do it. But then they were like here. They were like, oh, well, he's genetically engineered. So he he understands like. Yeah, but I figured that was so everyone else could do that. Because everyone else knew Topo was like a badass before. I I thought it was just so they could talk to him. Okay. And then Aquaman was like, oh, yeah, I already know this motherfucker. I got you. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I, I guess I just. I can't. I can't remember. Like, as I've never been a huge Aquaman guy anyway. But like, can like and all I might the Atlanteans have missed do that? Where they talk to the fish, or nah, is it just nah, him? Nah. I think it's just him. Why is it? His, I mean, his kid can do it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just the Currys, though. Okay, in some capacity. Uh, in my memory of Aquaman, at least. Yeah, I mean, I don't. There aren't like a yeah. lot. It, it's just kind of a royal thing. Well, I, yeah, I don't have like a lot of memories of Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> it's not deep lore for me, for shout. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but from I, what I know, that that tracks though. I mean, I I could see it being uh, different for them. Like even, well, it's kind of like with uh, with Mira. Like not all, uh, uh, very few of them can do the actual like magician thing. Right? Like, there's even a magician clan inside the Aquaman universe. And, yeah, like I I know that part at least. More of that, yeah. But yeah, there it's it's like the not all humans can sing kind of right. thing. Yeah, I mean, most of what I know about Aquaman, I mean, comes from. Wizard Magazine and reading Grant Morrison's JLA. Yeah. And, uh, you know. I know I, a lot about Aquaman from people defeating him. <laughs> uh-huh. And I don't mean that as a slight. I just mean that he ends up in stories. Yeah. That are bigger stories where everyone's getting their ass kicked. Like, yeah. Mark Wade's JLA year one. Yeah. Yeah. That's Tower like, of Babel or something. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. Uh I come to think of it, a lot of my Aquaman knowledge comes from Mark Wade, yeah, and Grant Morrison. That's in a fair amount of my art, like Aquaman universe actually comes from Young Justice, mm-hmm. like because 
Yeah. Yeah. That the, the Aqualad water in there is a fucking yeah. badass. And then, yeah, they have a whole little tiny Aqua universe in there. Yeah. It's glorious. Yeah. God, I want to finish that show. I think they did finish it proper. I just haven't finished the I, couple episodes I have left. I don't know that they finished it, but because there's a, a lot of people going like, oh, is it coming back? And Wiseman's like, oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so we're sitting I, right in there. Yeah. Knowing them, they left several threads and I am not going to remember what those threads are if it ever does come back. It's going to be like Futurama for me. When I do see it, I'll remember everything instantly and love it. Yeah. And then I'll remove myself and forget again. Well, Young Justice, though, they do this thing where they like do time jumps. They do. So, and they don't like really like, explain what well, even just happened. In, like season one. Yeah. Like season two was like three years later. Uh, he he big now? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that can be good. But it's also like I will sit down and we'll sort of watch it and go like, wait, what? Yeah. What? Where did all these where did all these clones come from? Okay. Why, why, why are there several Okay, okay, okay. There are like eighteen guardians and they're okay. <laughs> Whatever, man. Uh and I just don't always remember. I I have trouble. I don't either. It, there are shows where I deeply, deeply understand and appreciate the recap before. Yeah. It's it's part of my MCU problem, actually. A little bit. Right now when I watch Reacher, which is fun, but it's mm-hmm. it's just fun to watch giant ass Alan Rickton er, Rickson like beat some Richen. people up. Rich Richen? Richson. Richson? Yeah. How do I actually say his name? I, I know it's spelled, I think. Alan Richson. It's like rich and there's a T for some reason and then yeah. there's the word son. Right. And like I don't know. It, By the way, we I I meant to bring this up last episode. Mm-hmm. He says he wants to play Batman. Oh, I saw that. And I'm into it. I am too. Yeah. Dye's hair. We talked about this earlier. We can dye his hair. Yeah. Coincidentally. I do one in black hair, but like, yeah, because he is, he's a tall, he's a, he's a giant blonde thing, but yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to die him. But other than that, yeah, I uh-huh. think he absolutely has the structure for it. I don't know. You know what? Don't die him. And he can play Batman from earth zero. That's cool too. And just have him be like, he is the Batman Bob Kane created before Bill Finger came in and fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll just let him show up and do like an Owlman yeah. thing or something. I mean, you're not going to tell me like Ian Glenn had black hair though. I mean. No, no, that's fair. I, that's fair. I mean, if I've, I have survived uh, somewhat all of these years with nothing but brunette Barry Allens, I, I can deal with a blonde Bruce Wayne. I'm okay. I could do it too. It would be fun it's if that's something he like flashes through when he's Bruce. Yeah. And then he like washes it out in two seconds when he's Batman again. Yeah. Like, the only Everyone. reason Batman ha- ever has black hair in the comics is really just because he puts on way too much of that grease paint when he's putting on his mask. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah just real quick. Just, just the grease paint gets more aggressive. Right. Yeah. I, it, <laughs> I think if you were him and had to actually put on that outfit, it, uh-huh. it would probably be advantageous if you were actually bald. I mean, frankly. Yeah. But he's got, he's got hair to deal with. Well, he's still got to keep up the, the appearance of being the... Uh, Handsome Playboy. Playboy. Yeah. Well, but actually, that's a good point. He's always up to date. And mm-hmm. Handsome Playboy at this point involves like a man bun. So <laughs> that's got to be a problem. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that could be an issue. It's not going to fit under. There's a version of Batman I want to write that everyone would hate. Mm-hmm. And I won't go too deeply into it, but it really is just like Instagram influencer Batman and Robin oh, being God. total dick bags. Total Paul Hogan yeah. bullshit. Yes, that is exactly how I pitched it to my wife the other day. <laughs> Did I even day. have his name right? <laughs> yeah, Paul, yeah, Paul and Jake Logan. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, was, it is just that. Like, it is... As soon as they turn the camera off, they go fight crime and hang out with Justice League. No, before no, that. No, 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 no. Oh, it's worse. No, it's worse. It's like oh, while fuck. they are fighting crime... They're like on Instagram being like, what's up, bitches? Just caught the Riddler. You know, just like, of course, in this version, Bruce's parents never died. He's just a dick. <laughs> like he was always <laughs> destined for this life. But just now his costume sucks because it's on his trust fund allowance. Yeah. Because he didn't actually earn any real money. Yeah. It's just TikTok pranker, Batman yeah. and Robin. Yeah. Who a- accidentally gets into some real shit. And absolutely has shitty curled hair. Of yeah. course he does. Yeah. Do you have anything else on Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom that you wanted to get off your heart? I don't think I've gotten much off my heart in general. But yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, overall notes were, yes, you were right. I did love Topo. And um, I did like the movie. I really actually enjoyed them. I'll watch it again. Yeah. Um, I think I just really 
enjoyed how much uh, I liked the like warm Aquaman relationship. Mm-hmm. I think I like those two actors in that role, and I think they have a great time on screen. Yeah. I, I, it, it was a really good like buddy comedy to me in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Movie didn't really do anything wrong. It like it as a movie, it was perfectly functional. Yeah. It, just Which was shocking that it's like, I mean, yeah, I get that. With all the reshoots and everything, it was shocking that it hung together as well as it did. It did hang together. It, there was more Amber Heard than I thought there was going to be, for sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. I get it. it I, I don't think it would have hung together without a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Like, what would we be talking about if it was like, you're about to kill this kid and where's her mom? Yeah. I mean, yeah, Amber Heard ha- absolutely had to be there, but I could see that they kind of just wanted to keep it, you know, pretty straightforward and... Maybe minimize the time. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, they clearly minimized any like involvement in any kind of future thing. Or yeah, no Batman. Any, any cameos of any kind. Oh, <laughs> uh, and yeah, I get it. I get it. Like, it, if you're going to end the road there, that's cool. It's funny that it's called Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Like, because yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I I really did enjoy the movie. Yeah, I mean, I you were telling me earlier you didn't like the the Black Manta agency issue and yeah like the king possessing him it was just like dude you already had all that revenge in your heart like and then they just kind of like took that from him like well now he's possessed and i'm like are you is he is he possessed is he still like in charge like and i do hate a possession story yeah i mean i hate a bitch as far as that goes but i didn't i, I guess i didn't mind with him too much because i don't know I, if he wouldn't entire... have the power otherwise to pose a threat is he would have the... been a problem either way and like yeah. uh, he says several times in it that it, like, he's stronger than he used to be, but like he also got a super sword. Mm-hmm. Um, same time, it was funny because like he gets all that power, his suit back, the trident, all that goes away at the same time, and then he gets just bitch slapped out of the fucking movie. <laughs> and I loved it. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah. I, I he, his entire backstory though was basically you killed my dad, so I'm going to kill you. So yeah. it wasn't that. It it's not like they killed this giant. Uh, steaming, you know, catalyst that they could have just made so much out of. Like, it, they didn't ruin the meal. It was a, it was a fucking basic little, yeah, chicken nugget of a, of a meal anyway. Yeah, I, I, my biggest issue with the whole movie was that I was just kind of bored most of the time and kind of just waiting for it to be over. But I mean, like a lot of the effects I mean, looked cool. I was, like, not, I was pretty in it for for what it was. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I it, I was I was there for two hours. Yeah, I mean, some of the effects look really cool as far as like the like the robots walking around that they were driving. That shit looked like almost stop motion. That was neat. I liked that. I thought that was cool. Some of it looked really cool, and then some of it looked you know like garbage. But I mean, what do you? I thought the movie was very pretty though, as far as that. Goes. It was pretty. It just like don't look at it too long. Yeah. Or analyze it because you're like that. And there are definite shots where it's just like, oh, they're on a green screen. Oh, that green screen. You know, there there are a couple of those. Yeah, they're going to be jarring that way. Yeah. And at some point, I forget what scene it was. I thought he tried to kind of recreate the one shot feel of Mm -hmm. the top of the Italy uh, little scene. Yeah. I forget what that what that scene was. I do remember thinking this though. Whatever it was, I was thinking about was like, man, I I know what you're going for. It's I think he just reframed it so much that it it wasn't as obvious, but I still was very into the scene. I still Mm -hmm. thought it was very pretty. You could tell where James Wan like put his heart into something and really like pulled it off, I guess. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I I probably just didn't notice him as much because weirdly, this was one of those movies where like I kept in like flinching as though there was a remote by me Mm -hmm. where I could rewind and just watch (laughs) something again. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if that was ADD or just... Me wanting to watch something again real quick to see if I caught something or yeah. could catch something else or whatever. I feel like it's the same thing when, like, if I'm reading something in, like, a book, sometimes, like, I'll try to, like, pinch out to, like, yeah. zoom in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, son of a bitch. This is analog. <laughs> <laughs> it's a magazine. Fuck. <laughs> Damn it. I can't zoom in on that titty. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I was just trying to read the article anyway. I mean, shit. Yeah. No. That's... I think... <laughs> I think that was most of what I had with Aquaman. I, it's it's good to see it, it having done as well as it has. Yeah. I, I don't I don't mind that this is the end though. As far as the, the you know the proper bits that we were talking about for X amount of years now, me and you and all that. Yeah, I'm I'm good with that being where it is. And 
don't take that as I wouldn't like more of what we are were promised a few years ago, but right. it is what it is now. Like if if in a couple of years, you know, Zack Snyder is, you know, uh, finishing up his whatever bullshit that you know Snyder fans are loving right now. I'm I haven't watched it. I'm gonna watch Rebel Moon when the director's cut is out. Damn it! But I'm probably gonna watch it as soon as I get around to it in general right now. But I haven't had time. Yeah, you know, but if like for some reason like he pops back in. I think we, I had a conversation with you about this where I was like, I am happy to take that shovel and pack the dirt on the DCEU grave. But if Snyder the Friendly Ghost pops back up <laughs> with an Elseworld story, I will ha- happily, you know, consume that. At, at this point, I think best interpretation of possible events for you mm-hmm. would, for that would be just Gunn starts his thing. He kind of, he wants to cross over a few characters anyway. Yeah. Uh, Aquaman, Flash, Blue Beetle among them, Peacemaker, and and some of the parts well, tied uh, to we that. We don't know about Aquaman. Well, we don't, but he crossed it over in the Flash uh, end credits, so that indicates something, but that's all we know right now. Well, that was just leading into Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, though. Well, true. That was just being like, hey, he's still in a universe with Jason Momoa, so please go watch <laughs> Aquaman and Lost Kingdom. Yeah, that could and sidebar he, it even more. Yeah, that, and I so think like, that was maybe just a suggestion on his part. I don't think he was actively like thinking about like, oh yeah, we're going to tie this in. Mm. I mean, it's an interpretation, but I'm I, just yeah, like, I, yeah, I don't know if it happens. I, don't, I do not believe we'll ever see Jason Momoa as Aquaman again. I don't think so either. But like certain characters that I, I know he was going to consider canon at least. And and even that changed because I, I, I know when Flash came out, Bruce was still supposed to be in this movie. At mm-hmm. that time. Mm-hmm. And different versions of them. Yeah. At different times. But it it wasn't, it just wasn't the same. But anyway, like, I don't know, whatever might cross over happens. But point being, we're, I think we're going to be happier to just start over in general. Mm-hmm. At this point. Mm-hmm. And regroup a little ourselves as far as. Yeah. Like, I dig the shit out of what Zack Snyder was trying to do. And. <sighs> As much as I'm like, if this is the hand we're dealt, I, I don't terribly mind what we've gotten since his departure. But at the same time, like at this juncture, I am like, yes, just please, let's move on with it. I don't want any more like freaking Ghost of the Snyderverse, Hamadaverse bullshit. Like, yeah. If they let Flash play out long enough, though, to at least keep the moving parts and Gunn starts his own thing and that all yeah. starts to work. If at some point there's a callback to some sort of crisis era kind of moment mm-hmm. where you can restart and get yourself a couple of movies that are the, the Snyder, another little Snyder cul-de-sac that we didn't mm-hmm. see before. I think we're all going to be on board with that. Yeah. And absolutely. Uh, you know, frankly, I'll, uh, I, I'll have a hard on when I hear about that one. Yeah. But like, I think that's the only context we'll see maybe. Yeah. I mean, dude, like, cause the universe has to establish itself now. Yeah, out of out of like the Hamadaverse stuff, and that's what I'm going to refer to it as, I guess. But I mean, what Birds of Prey and the Suicide Squad, Peacemaker, like those were the ones I'd keep. Like Black Adam was passable, and Shazam Two was pretty good, but like not I, like I liked all of these, and I wouldn't have a problem with crossing over any mm-hmm. of them. But yeah, I, I like completely the, get just yeah. call a day and move on. The general quality was just kind of like, what are we doing here? What, what's the plan? Why are we doing this? Well, this that, is that so by the numbers. It's well, and that's the thing that Snyder's pointed out recently in some interview where he kind of said he doesn't want to go back to like comic movies because no matter what, you can't do anything by itself anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't just make a Superman movie mm-hmm. like he wanted to make back in the day where he thought maybe blah, 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 blah. But that was 2013, mm-hmm. like 2011 when he was or 2010 when he was talking about it. Yeah. Like, those those are different days. You can't just make any product and it not have to cross over with blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. I mean, 2013, that was still like, if that is something Snyder believed, he was ignorant. No, even then he knew because he'd already gotten in trouble for Watchmen. Yeah. I, you know, 20, I mean, even back in, I mean, once Avengers happened. Well, I mean, when he was talking about that comment, that was like a few yeah. months ago, as far as yeah, yeah now yeah. the landscape. Right. But, but 2008, when Iron Man came out and they mentioned the Avengers initiative, that's it. It was over. It's over. <laughs> that's uh, no more Nolan bullshit. It like, was completely over. I mean, after that, it even was before it, that. People were. Be, yeah, before that, there was like an era of like, all right, three movies in. Maybe they mentioned this other major character. Mm-hmm. 
I've been waiting for yeah. seven years now. Yeah, dude. When Brandon Routh was cast as uh, Superman for Superman Returns, people on the internet were like doing photoshops of Bale and Routh together. Like, yeah. oh, the new universe is starting. And blah, blah, blah. They like, were in fanzines. And then like no one's coming out and being like, oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gee, Christ. Uh, all tour piece it of is, shit. <laughs> it is funny, though, because that would have done fine. It if would've. It, it, it would have done fine. <laughs> it would have. Brandon Routh was a fine Superman. Yeah, and then like no one's attached to Man of Steel, and people are like, oh, okay, so this is gonna be the tie-in with Bale. Well, I no, still don't do it. no, oh, okay, yeah, all right, fine. <sighs> so it's like there's always been like a desperate need. I know. And then once Marvel did, it was just like, oh, no turning back now. Once they crossed, the- <laughs> yeah, there's no turning back. Yeah, let no one finish this shit, and let's move on toward the shared universe. I don't know how to undo that either. That that bell. May not be able to be unwrung. Like, uh, it may always just be the case that when we see IPs that have universes this big now, we just expect they're going to expand. Well, we hope in some ways. Like, Well, I mean, actually, it's it's true now. Like, what, look what Gunn's doing. It didn't just say we're going to build a Superman universe. But I think, like, what I, one of the things I like that Gunn is doing. He's with Creature Commandos. For I sake. know. <laughs> but one of the things I like what Gunn is doing is he, like, goes to Matt Reeves and he's like, hey, do you want to be part of the universe? And he's like, nope. And he's like, cool. Cool. You Love you, bro. Your, <laughs> you do your trilogy and we're going to, you know. Let me know if you need anything. We're going to fuck off over here and do our thing. Yeah. And that's nice, too, because I'm like, yeah, like, if that's, if he wants to, t- hey, if Matt Reeves has a story he wants to tell, cool. It's, I mean, the first one made a billion dollars. It did fine. God bless. <laughs> Ha- have your cake, eat it too. Yeah, um, yeah, he'll be right. <laughs> and he's like, well, I kind of want to hang out and do your thing too. Cool, you can be it involved is, in that. It is funny though because it's like fun. we're in terms of universes we're sharing. It's it's not going to do a billion next time. No, it won't. And it it's won't. not because of the gun universe and and the trajectory and blah blah blah. It's because movies don't do that anymore. It, well, they do with your Oppenheimer or Barbie. It, yeah, but like. Those are super rare right now. <laughs> they're they're super rare right now. Like, that they movie's going to make rare. Well, a billion has always been rare, they, but uh, yeah, it, it but became you, an expectation at some point. It became an expectation with the fans because they were like, once Avengers did a billion, and then Iron Man three made a billion. I mean, it. Well, but then uh, that and, always confused me too. Because why did the bar become two? Because Infinity War and Endgame made uh, the gross domestic product of several countries in a weekend. Yeah. And like ah, that, that, why wasn't two the the standard anymore? I I think it was like some weird mark where like X amount of million just move the goalpost moves. Yeah, and you just keep having to get higher. But those got so high so fast that no one even bothered that. Right, and it's it's one of those things where it's like if you recall, you know, uh, Avengers made a billion, Iron Man three made a billion, yeah, and then like Ant Man came out and didn't, and it made like you know three hundred or something. 300 million. I think it made, yeah, like three or 400 million. And everyone was like, oh, it's the first misstep of the MCU. And like, no. No, it's a great movie that did no. fine numbers. It, 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 it broke the universe a little bit in terms of its, you know, mechanics, but it was a fun <laughs> movie. And it was fine. And yeah. But yeah. then you have the outliers where like Joker comes in and makes a billion dollars. Well, that was just too weird. Mainstream had to check that out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Even GA was like, what the fuck is happening right yeah. now? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looked cool and it was a good movie. It was I mean, movie. it does. And it's, it, it, Phillips it, did a great job of having that be one of those movies where you can go back and interpret it a lot of yeah. ways. Yeah. Like even the way the film is literally filmed, uh, the angles even, or something that like film school people look at apparently. The most exciting thing about the sequel to me is that it's going to be a musical. I don't know what we're stepping into. I don't here. know. I don't know. Like he is actually doing something Seems like he's doing something different with this one. He's playing with a format he created, and I like it. And I am... I was immediately hooked when he said folly ado, because that fucking term's amazing and perfect yeah. for those two. It's like... <laughs> I, I don't know. It just seems pretentious enough. Like, because Joker... That's a good way to put it. Pretentious enough. Yeah. Joker in of itself was like the most pretentious it take was on very a pretentious. thing. It was like... It was... It really was. I mean, I've said it before. It really was like... I have an idea for an independent movie. I happen to be using this IP. Yeah. Like, like can I, we, this would be fun for Joker. We'll actually get some eyes on it. Yeah. Cool. 
We don't believe in it at all. It's like if you grab Donnie Darko and put a recognizable face on that shit. Yeah. And, and, and that, you know, we talked about that before is like the studio believed in it so little that they let other companies come in and co-finance it and then like missed out on the billion dollars. It Wasn't made. that one of those Hamada fuck ups? I oh, think it yes. was like one of his first oh, yeah. huge fuck ups, right? Yeah, man. Toby Emmerich and Hamada. I, I, yeah, I think that was like the first one he got in. and <laughs> Yeah, that was just like, a, I mean, Scorsese, okay. <sighs> we don't believe in it. That was well, such weird news. That was such weird news to even hear Scorsese was attached. To yeah. And then at some point in the news, we're like, what do you mean Mark Maron's in it? <laughs> like, what do you mean when you say those words to me? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. And that is exactly the comic book movie Mark Maron would be a part of. It, it is exactly that, yes. I mean, forgetting the fact that he played Lex Luthor in Super Pets, for Christ's sake. Which was fun. It was. He did a really good job. He did a great job. Super Pets is one of those I'll always kind of be sad that we didn't get more of. That was an animated weird movie. I hope so. I hope we get more. No, we won't. I know. <laughs> but they could, cheaply. Yeah. <laughs> kind of relatively cheaply <laughs> that's one of those it's like if they ever did more they'd have to recast crypto because i don't think Dwayne is coming back if anything he'd come back for that maybe but i think it would be direct to home video mm-hmm. maybe it's just gonna be a streaming thing you're coming back. yeah they probably recast kate mckinnon because i can't see her coming back necessarily anyway uh we got a little bit of news we can talk about uh <laughs> nicholas cage <laughs> <laughs> shoots down hopes of his Superman ever returning after the Flash cameo. He says, I don't think that's coming back in any way. And listen, I wasn't angry about the situation. I really wasn't. I was just confused. I was mystified by what happened in the first place. Because Tim Burton, one of the greatest directors in the world, had wanted to make the movie. And already had kind of defined the way to make the best comic book based storyline with the Batman franchise with Michael Keaton. Disagree with him there. (laughs) So I couldn't understand why that studio who had such success with that fantastic, brilliant director would pull the plug. He's talking about the original. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then as for his flash cameo says, I wasn't upset. I was just perplexed. I was just like, it wasn't what I shot. And I was worried about it. Like, did you just tell me that I was witnessing the destruction of the universe so you could take pictures of me and then animate me? Whether it was through CGI or AI, that wasn't the conversation we had. So I was confused. <laughs> <sighs> yes, yes, that is what happened. Yeah. That is what happened. Yeah. I'm sorry, Nick. I am. I I was happy to see him there with all the context that lies below it. Yeah. But yes, that that is a cheap way to make that moment happen. It, it is. And you know what? Like uh, someone Someone asked me the other day. And I apologize. I don't remember their name. Uh, we were in an Ollie's and we were talking about comic books. Mm-hmm. As then, it happened. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was in the graphic novel section and the guy was like, well, let me ask you this. Cause at this point he knows I've, I've got a podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he was like, well, let me ask you this. If they, if Tim Burton came back and did a Nicholas Cage Superman movie, would you watch it? I'm like, well, yeah, I'll, I'd watch anything. That's not the real question. The real question is, do I want it? And I say, no. And he was like, why not? I said, look, I would happily take it if we could get like a parallel universe version of the Nick Cage movie. And it would be like what Tim Burton would have made back in 1993. Yeah. Tim Burton now sucks balls. (laughs) I have not enjoyed a single Tim Burton product. In years. Yes. Yeah. Since Planet of the Apes, probably. Like, I haven't even, I didn't like that one. I don't remember the last one I really watched, but genuinely it would probably be in like the Frank and Weenie area. I, like the first one, like the the, the short film. Or? I didn't know there was a second. Well, there was a short film and then there was like a later film that was actually financed, I think, by Disney. Uh, or I think both of them were actually. Well, then I may be even get that wrong. Yeah. I, I, it's like the last product I remember that I was. I, I just I know he's done a lot of movies. I don't yeah. go out for them. Right. I mean, I love Edward Scissorhands and Beetlejuice and Nightmare Before Christmas. Those are all beautiful. And the first Batman movie, Batman Returns, not so much. Returns um, has some problems. We've talked about it. Has some problems. I, I, you know, great for nostalgia, but at the same time, I'm like, mm, this doesn't hang together for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, once we get to like Planet of the Apes, I'm like, I don't like that. I did like Sweeney Todd all right, though. I did like Sweeney Todd. Oh, That's a good oh, point. oh, Sleepy Hollow. I liked Sleepy Hollow. Oh, Sleepy Hollow was good. That's a good one. Was that a Danny Elfman soundtrack too? 
Uh, probably. That was a good score. Probably. But that was high school, I believe, for me. Yeah, that was that was like high school or we're, college. We're like 20 like, years out now. Yeah. Where yeah. We're talking about the last it's, thing that we watched. It's been a long damn time since <laughs> Tim Burton made something I liked. I'm just sitting there going like, what happened to you, dude? You are doing some weird, funky ass shit. I think he's still making numbers, man. I, I It's just not in any way a thing that I'm into anymore. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm very curious to see uh, Beetlejuice 2. Oh, God, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's a thing. Oh, yeah. I hear Amelia... Uh, what's her name? Not Amelia Clark. What is Earhart? Her no, <laughs> Earhart. <laughs> what is that girl's name who did Wednesday? Uh, Which he did. Pugue, maybe. No, no, that's, that's Florence whatever Pugue. Pugue. Um, no, you're, you're talking about Florence Pugue. <laughs> I am. <laughs> whatever that girl's name is, who did Wednesday with I don't him? Know. Wednesday that looks like the other lady that I, I, I hear he's doing. She looks like Aubrey something that I can't remember. Yeah, Plaza or something. Yeah, like the new new Aubrey Plaza. Yeah. They have she's, a great hit on an acceptance speech somewhere. It's <laughs> fantastic. Um, I hear she's playing Lydia's daughter. Okay. And Willem Dafoe just came out talking about how he's his character is he's a detective in the underworld who was a B movie actor in real life. God damn it. I don't know that I've ever heard something I'm more interested in than those words. I know, right? William Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe playing a former B actor. Yeah. Ghost Detective. Yeah. That and Michael Keaton. Where do coming I sign back. up for the whole franchise? Michael Keaton is coming back as Beetlejuice. Fuck, so, yes. I right, mean yeah. 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 I that can't be fucked up. I don't think it can be fucked up. I could probably give that to like a high school kid with a I believe it can be Cam quarter and I from believe it will my be my childhood. But those performances okay. are gonna be great. <laughs> They'll be fantastic. If anything's gonna save it, it's gonna be them. Uh we've got it's like look, be a lime and a coconut revival as well. This does not come from gun. Mm-hmm. This is just a random thing, a report that came out that there's th- there are three actresses who are in the mix f- for the role of Cara Zarell, and they believe that it's being casted now because she's going to show up in DC Legacy. I mean, Superman Legacy. This does not come from Gunn. This is not a real news item. But the names are the House of Dragon star Millie Alcock, CODA star Amelia Jones, and the Winchester star Meg Donnelly. I don't know any of these people. Not a clue. Let me see. Do you have it on? I, I does don't it have, show pictures or no, anything? We can look it up. But I don't have pictures. Uh, I, I don't think all of them. Amelia Jones looks more the most like the Woman of Tomorrow uh, character since they are adapting that. True. But uh, let's pull her up. That is Amelia Jones. She, she looks like a Bill Quisibly drawing. She does look familiar. But yes, no, she actually would. She's got the nose. She's got the general. She would fit in that boat. Yeah, that's, that's actually creepy. She actually does look like the character. Uh, Millie Alcock. Let's look at her. Um, hmm, I don't know any of these people as far as their acting ability goes. I assume Gunn will choose wisely. Typically has. I don't see Millie Alcock at all going for that. I don't, as far as her looks are concerned. You have picked a weird picture because, uh, uh, I mean, I mean oh, no. let me point this out. She's There's another one. No, nah, I can see it. I mean, the hair's wavy in the right way, but the, the <laughs> other one though, like, yeah, what was wrong with the other one? Oh, uh, it's her like walking and down a, a red carpet. Here. It is, but she's, you, it's just that, that particular picture, she seems to be like snarking at a photographer that didn't ask, mm-hmm. but she's also seemingly wearing a trash bag. <laughs> it, it's a very heavy duty. One. It does. It looks, I don't know what that looks like. I don't either. It, it, it looks like if someone misinformed the first companion from the... It looks like a leather tube. Tenant era. Yeah, it does look like something from the Tenant era yeah. of Doctor Who. Absolutely. It looks like she's about looks to... like Rose as well. Start frankly. screaming, mo fro ro 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 Yeah. Yeah. All right, who else we got? Uh, Meg Donnelly. I think first was my favorite of those, if you just showed me those three like headshots. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Okay, no, I don't want actual pictures of her as Supergirl that people are making. <laughs> Stop it, AI. Um, that girl? I, that's that's her. Hmm. Zombies. Yeah, I don't know her. Well, it has to do with zombies, so I'm a little surprised I don't know her. Yeah, the show. yeah. Uh, she's yeah, this zombies star. I don't know what zombies is. I feel like it's going to be a hard thing to Google. Mm. Imagine just Googling zombies show. Yeah, well, I can click on zombies. Oh, yeah. zombies four. Will it happen or has the series finished? Okay. What I, series? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I don't think this girl looks like 
I don't know. She's got. She looks Who's, like Emma Frost. That's what she looks like. I mean, actually, that's that's a much closer casting for. Uh, she reminds me though a little bit of like who was the Supergirl that uh, did like a gimmick role on Supergirl uh, uh, as a uh, Brainiac something. Like, oh, what? Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> it. I'm completely blanking on this name. It's, oh, Laura Vandervoort. There you go. Yeah, yeah. She reminds me of her a little bit. Okay. Okay. Like a high thick that's, cheekbone yeah. kind of thing that's not a positive thing for me yeah i get it because i thought laura vandervoort was like just not the she's not my favorite supergirl by any stretch yeah i know but i don't it was the high cheekbones though that reminded me all right let's see uh here we got somebody asking james gunn james just a small doubt when you said there would be games in the dcu are they movie tie-in games or actual aaa games and are you guys are you guys started working on it? Is there a specific reason that you guys are making DCU games? He said, AAA games. Yes. For fun. So gun says, yes, that they're making DCU games for fun. Mm -hmm. I thought that would be obvious. I don't know what AAA games are. I don't know. I don't know. You want to Google it? You want me to? Um, I'll let you do that one. Mm -hmm. I'll do that one. I'll let you do that one. What are, (laughs) what are AAA games? Classification uh, signify high budget, high profile games that are typically produced and distributed by large, well known publishers. Okay, so uh, big ass games. Big ass games. Okay, cool. They mean triple A. Triple A games. Okay, cool. Uh, this person says, James, I didn't understand something about the Arkham TV series. You had said that the project did not change direction, and so when they came to DC Studios, the project was meant to be in the DCU, right? Responding to the comments, though, you said two contradictory things. In one comment, you said it was one of the first proposals you took, while in another comment, you said it was not announced earlier because it had not been proposed to you yet. I don't understand. Gunn says, I don't understand the confusion. When I made the announcement back in January, it wasn't proposed to us yet. Yet it was one of the first projects pitched to us. Only Mangold Swamp Thing and a couple others were pitched before that. How do you see that as contradictory? Do you, do you see anything weird about that? I'd really have to look at that timeline again for for sure. Yeah. As he says back uh, when the announcement back when I made the announcement, it wasn't proposed to us yet. I don't know. I think I have to fact check that one. Yeah. I don't think it matters because it, it's happening. It doesn't. Not not truly. But I don't understand what either of them are really talking about. No, not really. <laughs> not for real. I wanted to run that by you because I was like, Jason's smarter than I am. No. Like, and- you have a greater grasp conceptually on, like, logical. I mean, it's just a screenshot. I don't know. I'm just going to read through the screenshot again and see if it makes sense if I read it better. Okay. Arkham TV. Nope. No idea. Okay. All right. Well, I also I just don't. Yes. Does it mean, like, the Arkham detective show no the like arkham Gotham? tv series that matt reeves was is developing yeah okay it's part of the dcu we talked about that last week right um this person's calling into question because james said it didn't change direction so that means that when it went when it came to dc studios the project was meant to be in the dcu but gun had supposedly two contradictory things comments in one comment he said it was one of the first proposals that he took well, in another comment, he said it was not announced earlier because it had not been proposed yet. And Gunn says, when I made the announcement back in January, it wasn't proposed to us yet. I'm not sure that makes sense to me. I, I think, I don't know. I think I may have an interpretation at least, but like, uh, I don't know. I, it sounds like it was always a project. Like you said before, him, right. him and Reeves have talked. Well, Reeves was working on it way before Gunn came in. Yeah, it sounds like they've always had that conversation and then the proposal as yeah. the TV show proper mm-hmm. was post what he was talking about. That's the only thing I can think. But post what he was talking about, as we just discussed, he he said we're we're not going to come together. Like it, like I think what he's also getting at is like that proposal for me means very little. Like it's not like somebody brought Matt Reeves' show to him and said, "Is this okay with you?" He already said, "Yeah, that's your own thing." I mean, in his big ten point plan, he comes out with the. Like one of the major points was mm-hmm. there will be else worlds. Right. There will be I'm Elseworlds. not in charge of the else worlds. But Matt Reeves' Arkham TV series is proper DCU. Yeah, and that part's weird. But I mean, the proposal part afterward. I guess they liked it and they bought it, but Maybe. This is what he said, but anyway. Maybe they just proposed it to him after they decided they were gonna actually put it in. Yeah. And said, No, we it's making it a lot a lot of money and it's gonna be in your wheelhouse. Sorry, buddy, but that'll contradict a lot of what he said about how he's gonna 
have like full creative control about the universe. I, mm-hmm. I don't know either. Yeah, I don't know. I get it. That timing's weird. Uh, this person says, James Gunn should make Peacemaker the new psychic pirate. I think they meant psycho pirate. Certain. The only character to remember the old universe. And he keeps trying to explain this to the characters and they make fun of him thinking he's making up this story. That would be phenomenal. That is an incredible pitch. Honestly. James Gunn says, well, I wouldn't want the universe shift to be that big a part of the story. It's a fair note. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But also, how much is Peacemaker going to be a part of the whole story? Yeah. So overall, that would kind of fit. Yeah, I would be okay with it, honestly. I I, I think they're. I, I, I think I would maybe argue with James in the room on that one. Yeah, like, I think I'd be like, you can do that, but then also <laughs> like not really touch on it that much. Just yeah. every once in a while, he brings up a thing, and they're like, "What are you talking about?" No, that suggestion's right though. As far as like, yeah, he would be a great character that you could take the piss out of all day on that. Yeah, like okay, shut the fuck up, toilet bowl boy. You know. Yeah, and. It would also be fun to actually just have Psycho Pirate there and have him doing it. Have Peacemaker being like, oh, what are you talking about? Are you talking about like the, the other universe again? That would be fun if like Psycho Pirate was a like the frail, very mentally handicapped version of himself. Like mm-hmm. every fucking schizotypal looking, paranoid, delusional looking mm-hmm. mental disorder you can have kind of version where it's just, man, he needs some help. And then there's peacekeeper just like trying to help him peacemaker sorry (laughs) trying to help him Uh uh-huh but also shut the fuck up dude (laughs) no one believes us (laughs) (laughs) i saw it too yeah and then eagly hugs him at some point yeah yeah of course he does by the way did you notice eagly was uh was in guardians volume three no yeah he jumped ship for a minute he popped over the marvel universe of course he would when they release all the animals like Eagly that, flies that's exactly where it would be. And <laughs> God damn that magical eagle. <laughs> of course he jumped into another universe. Yeah, why not? He's the real psycho pirate. Um, <laughs> see, this guy says, James, both James Mangold and Guillermo del Toro expressed interest in Swamp Thing. What made you choose James Mangold for the movie? And James says, well, for starters, James actually expressed his interest to me. Guillermo, who I know and love, did not. Hmm. I mean... That's pretty straightforward. One dude wants to do it. That's all our news. Oh, that's it. That's it. Okay. That's all our news. Well, I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. We should do this uh, weekly more often. Yeah. Impromptu is fun. Yeah. We don't know what we're talking about. No. Like, that's actually the case when we prepare, though. So, Mm -hmm. this isn't changing anything, really. Uh, You know, I can usually construct something of a thought process. But none of this news needed it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this was like a fun thing where like I think you would have been I think we would have been live googling whatever you brought up if if you yeah. just read it out. Yeah. I mean this was like literally a situation where like I was down the street from Jason and yeah. he was alone for a minute and he was we were like, Hey, let's go ha- let's hang out and then I came over and I was like, You wanna do a DC on screen? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's all it was, y'all. So if it if it didn't meet your expectations <laughs> par for course um <laughs> we just had more fun doing it this time yeah yeah or at the very least less work doing it we'll do some more prep fun. next time maybe no, not always yeah <laughs> i said maybe yeah but i mean that should uh that should wrap it you think so i think so i mean i don't have much else to say on aquaman no oh i did i did tell you before that like i'm always going to cherish that the proper dcu ends with just Patrick Wilson eating a bug uh huh, in what is apparently a non-reputable restaurant because there shouldn't just be cockroaches big enough that you can put them on a burger. Well, it was outside. They can't really handle that much. You can. You can. You outside can. in the middle of the day, cockroach that yeah. big, that's a problem. You shouldn't be eating there. Yeah. Well. Shouldn't be eating there. I mean, like if you're talking about like, I don't know, downtown, maybe. No. But no version of events. I'm saying you've got a point there. But if you're like in like a like a sea town, like a like a coastal town like he's talking about and he, daytime. I don't know. Daytime. I don't care. I they don't care. do. That's what like I'm, okay, but if you're in a I've rest, always used okay. that as like a, a familiarity part where like if but cockroaches it, are so happy that they're coming out in the daytime <laughs> you have a problem. But if you're like let's say like you've got a restaurant 
You mm-hmm. keep it all 100, man. It's mm-hmm. clean. You got a great health You're score. actually trying. You've got a place outside that people sit and eat. Or if it's not even at that restaurant, if it's like communal sitting in, the, in that little part of the town, because that happens too, mm-hmm. you got a restaurant three doors down, maybe ain't doing so hot. Okay. Not okay. really keeping okay. their shit up. You just up. think someone snuck over. Yeah. 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 I can defend that one restaurant and be like, we don't know it was a bad eye. It was a bad thing they were doing. It might be that other restaurant. We don't. We don't. Down the way. It was doing kind of shitty things. Yeah. Just weird odds. Yeah. And and that was, it was kind of big. But also the burger looked pretty good for being fair. It looked pretty good. It did look pretty good. I Until mean, he put the roach in it. Yeah. <laughs> I just, no part of me would have ever, ever guessed that was where we were going to land. Like stinger aside. I do kind of, and I hadn't thought about it until earlier this morning when we were talking about it, when you said you'd seen it. I was like, I do kind of enjoy the fact that the DCEU ends where the MCU begins. Like, the last bit of Iron Man is him going, I am Iron Man. The last bit of Aquaman, I am Aquaman. Big press conference to announce his existence. I mean, I I definitely caught the joke on the, the Marvel nod there. Yeah. So I, that is pretty cool. I didn't actually think of it as a bookend, but I like that. Yeah. And actually, now that you mention it, there's a cheeseburger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Just like an Iron Man. <laughs> oh, my dear Christ. <laughs> now, it was specifically a Whopper in Iron Man because that was a reference to I, there's something RDJ's uh, as, substance uh, turned around. To go along with many of the complaints that people have had about the DCEU and what it's become since Snyder left. It is funny that they would kill it with a specifically Marvel specifically reference. Specifically doing Marvel. I mean, even in this movie, and there's one of the things that bugged the shit out of me, you know, someone someone mentioned on Twitter, I liked Aquaman 2 better when it was Thor of the Dark World. And they even knew it in the movie because Aquaman's like, all right, calm down, Loki. Uh, yeah. And it was like, oh, God, that's so... The amount of things that watching and references in watching Aquaman 2, and it, it, we could probably make a dozen bookmarks of it, of things that are clearly in other universes that they're mm-hmm. watching. Like, they've definitely seen Endgame yeah. in this this Warner Brothers product. Like, I think there was even an Ash reference. I, I don't know. But no. By the way, I hate myself because I feel like one of those douchebags who refers to Target as Target. <laughs> Because every time I hear Endgame in my head, I go, Ngame. See, that's and that's just weird. It is weird. Like, Target is at least funny because no, Target... No, it's not. <laughs> no, it, like, it, in its time, Target pretended to be fancy Walmart. So, yeah. Target was the joke, and that's cool. But it's it still like, thinks it is, by the way. It, it does still think it is. And actually, Walmart redesigned its stores in to match Targets. It's It's uh-huh. been a weird game. But, like... That's not as weird to me as the people that actually say, like, oh, uh, would you please hand me a La Croix? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> and uh-huh. I'm a I'm a goddamn piece of shit elitist, elitist about a lot of language you are. bullshit. And go fuck yourself in that La Croix thing. Yeah. I'm going to call the line there and yeah. drag me in with the rest of those motherfuckers after that. But I got it. Yeah. I mean, your hero is Nero Wolf. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Some of the stuff that I'm a piece of shit about, and that's one of them. <laughs> and yes, yes, yes. Even I'm, yeah. even I'm wrong there. Yeah, it's funny because you you mentioned it earlier today to me that you actually had Chef on your resume, and like you said it, and it made me laugh because I'm like, this is the guy I've watched microwave the same freaking taco like three or four times yes. from Taco Bell, and then get sick afterward. I'm I like, went to the hospital later. <laughs> <laughs> but you make the best steak I've ever tasted. <laughs> like you are, you are legitimately a good cook. But then I'll see you do shit like that. I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I know what it is. It's, it's ADHD because you were talking to me while you were microwaving oh, yeah. that over and over again. I think that was the night we did the Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't. Was it not? No, we didn't go to go to that together. No, we didn't together we like regrouped the night after and talked to talked about it for six hours or some shit yeah maybe about how much we hated that fucking movie yeah <laughs> maybe i feel I still feel bad because i bummed you out before you went oh, it, i it, texted you and i was like don't even bother <laughs> <laughs> you're like i've waited four years and i'm like i know that's why i'm telling you that was one of those where like it, if it had been a different flavor movie i might have actually still been a, like a little annoyed coming out of it 
Yeah. Because, like, I, I I trust your opinion a lot. I, uh-huh. I, so, like, I didn't. I didn't want to go in and be flavored by like someone's opinion that yeah. I trusted and, you know, not like the movie. And then I watched the movie and I was like, it didn't matter what he did. Yeah. He could have told he could have dragged me in the parking lot saying, please don't do this. Please don't do this <laughs> on your knees, crying, saying, don't do it to yourself too. Uh-huh. And I would have still come out with the same opinion of that movie. Yeah. Like it, it just, after the after context was just, yeah, no, yeah. he was right. But he we hadn't right. been friends that long either at the t- at that time. It like was, It was a bit, but it I, wasn't like. I feel yeah. like after eight years of doing this show with you and being friends with you for longer than, much longer than that now. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm pretty good at being like, I didn't like this. Jason will be fine with it. He'll enjoy himself. <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly what Which I did exactly with Aquaman. exactly what you did with Aquaman. And yeah, that like, was accurate. Eh, wasn't for me. Yeah. Had some good bits. You're going to dig it. <laughs> <laughs> I did like Topo. I really did. I was fine with him. Like, I, I, there was a little too much of him. But, uh, I just, uh, it, it wouldn't have been as bad if he just kept, hadn't kept making those noises. Like, rah, 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 rah. Okay, we got it. Please just, like, cut out more of this movie. Please. Just <laughs> editing room. Jesus Christ. Please. Can you fill up the floor of this editing room? <laughs> Give me like an or 80 the modern version. Can you fill up the trash file on this computer? I need an 80 minute version of this <sighs> movie. What is, what is the 20 minute soundbite I can watch of Aquaman? <laughs> <sighs> we probably could do like an Olaf presents version of this movie. Have you seen those? No, I don't know what that is. They do this, uh, uh this huge series of shorts on Disney plus that Evelyn watches all the time where it's like Olaf presents. And it's basically just Olaf and some of the random casting characters uh-huh. uh, redoing a simplified, ridiculous version of other Disney movies. Okay. So it'd be like the Lion King in 60 seconds. That's kind of fun. It kind of is like, those are a little <laughs> bit, in, a, in a way, a lot funnier that like a lot of the Olaf presents are mm-hmm. just writers taking the piss and having to yeah. joke. Like, yeah, you, you can see where, where this hits. Yeah, Sure. I think we'd have fun with that problem. Yeah. We could probably do it with most of the DCU and have a good time. We'll do that. Mm-hmm. With, we'll do that as a bonus sometime. <laughs> no, we won't. Don't even, don't even promise it. We're not going to do it. We will. All right. Tell you what, we're going to end this uh, episode. Now God. we're going to do a bonus episode. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. I'm not. We're doing it. Nope. Yep. A bonus episode of what? Kicking and screaming. What are we doing? I don't know. Jesus Christ. Let's do it. No. Come on. We had nothing when we started this. We'll just That's open true. the DC things. We'll do comics castaway or something. I'd actually be down for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to head out so we can do this thing. Uh, check out your Patreon, patreon.com slash DC on screen. Only the $5 patrons get the Creature Commandos episode. Not Creature Commandos. What was it called? <laughs> Comet Castaways. Too many damn alliterations. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do it on. I excited about yet. Creature Commandos. I am. I, you know. It does sound like fun. Alan Tudyk. Yeah. Resident Alien, they came out with a season three trailer. I just love they're going to have Frankenstein I'm fucking involved. Very excited about the Resident Alien season three trailer. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. It looks fantastic. That is such a fun show. A little gray alien voiced by George Takei. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm down. I'm there. He was very threatening. He was. They even, I think they even had him go, oh my. They did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they have to at this point. Anyway, uh, dconscreen.com for every episode. Uh, Patreon.com slash dconscreen if you want to. Uh, you can join for free. And uh, I don't, I don't, I'm playing around with some ideas about how to make that uh, more interesting for you guys. But um, you can join for free and become part of the community. $1 a month gets you every episode ad free. And $5 a month gets you all of that plus whatever other kind of weird shit we come up with. Uh, and I guess we're going to do one now. So, uh, of whatever weird shit we come up with. That's going to happen. So go ahead and pop over there and <laughs> give us your money. We'll see you there. Until next time, <laughs> keep some DC on your screen. Hey, thanks for listening to DC on screen. Our theme song is by Jason Goss and Michael Shackelford of Galactic Engineers. The incidental music is by Michael Shackelford and Kevin McLeod. You can rate the show on Spotify or rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Doing that really helps push our show to new listeners, so your help would be much appreciated. You can also contact the show at DC on Screen on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or email us at dconscreen at gmail.com. To become a patron and get ad-free episodes and exclusive content, go to patreon.com slash dconscreen. 
Your reviews and feedback may end up on a future episode of DC On Screen. DC On Screen is a production of Maladjusted.tv in association with Stranded Panda. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever damn platform you use.